Warning, this podcast has stories of real-life events and true crime that happens every day. These stories may contain adult language and graphic or disturbing details not suitable for everyone. Listener discretion is advised. Welcome to War Stories. I'm Tom. I'm Chuck. And uh, we are back. We're doing an early morning because of scheduling. So apologies if. Either one of us sound froggy or groggy. Plus, we had a early morning technical difficulty. Um. Anyway, you good now? I thought I was going to have a technical difficulty. I just switched to a uh, fiber optic internet, and uh, I thought it was going to be a really good switch over. And so far, it's had its bumps, but it's faster. That's for sure. Well, that's that's good. They always say the fiber optics are like if if it's um, th- any part of that wire is spliced or anything that all that coming in. So if you have like 400 MIPS coming in, it, it will be drastically every time it splits, mm-hmm. every time it splits, it gets lower and lower and lower. My buddy was like, if it's good, if you have a direct link straight from the fiber straight to your house. Mm-hmm. That's what we have. Or everybody's got one yeah, so. so like i have one gig yeah. straight to the house dedicated so it never goes like doesn't matter how many people get on the internet even if they're they have fiber optic or not with you know with cable modem it was it was different so anyway this is not tech talk this is four stories <laughs> um and your delay is not too bad so i think we'll be all right uh so why don't you uh introduce our returning guest for this oh one? god i hope it gets better what your delay? Yeah, because yeah, I just so said returning guest. His returning name is uh, Rick. Oh God, <laughs> that was funny. Oh, dude, that delays that delays uh, a little bit, but it's <laughs> Rick. Um, he was on a while back. Uh, he's he was Lieutenant Corrections in DeSoto County, and uh, he's come on to talk about that today. So, welcome, Rick. Good morning. Good morning. Hey Rick, how are you? I'm good. How are y'all? Good. So now you, um, you've been in corrections. We've talked about uh, talking to people who've been in corrections, right? Uh, and last time you were kind of explaining your whole uh, career, right? And you had are you, you're retired now or? Oh no, uh, I got I got terminated. After oh. I'm sorry. We're having some technical difficulties with you too. I Chuck, can you hear him very well? Uh, I can change to a different mic. If you can switch to the one that it comes out of the cord, that'd be preferred. Yeah. yeah. Okay. One Let's see if that helps. Oh, should. I think it was talking out of the computer, or maybe the microphone on the actual uh, earbuds. So it's like back here. <clears throat> how's that that's a lot oh, better, yeah, better. Yeah, yeah. okay all right absolutely all right mm. so you were uh, saying yeah so I, I was terminated after just under 10 years oh <laughs> but it uh all right so to go back from the last time i was on right everything mm-hmm. was going great um Accommodations after accommodations, uh, evals, great evals, all the, all the good stuff, right? Right. So then we then we get a new sheriff, and our director at the time he gets let go. So we get a new director who's never been in corrections before. Like she has no idea. She's <laughs> been a she's been a cop, but. Never been in corrections. So my captain, who was, mm, he, he, he got to be captain from kissing butt. All right. So when the new sheriff comes in and the new director comes in, well, now all that's got to start all over again. Well, everything was still going good. And then uh, we had a 
my very first after 10 years death in custody which could have been prevented under my recommendation mm. and um but i was told nah don't worry about it so you'd never had a death in custody in the, the decade that you've been working there on my shift i have not oh okay yeah. so not the sheriff's well, department right but at yeah. least you had never worked a death right. in custody right okay. and it it all started from the previous shift she came in female came in right at the beginning of my shift and we have body scanners now or at DeSoto County, they have body scanners. So she comes in, they see something. She says, Oh, I'll get it out. So she gets it out. They run her through again. Well, it's still, you can still see stuff. Well, they, they didn't bother doing anything else. So I called my captain and I'm like, Hey, at what point do we send this person to the hospital? He's like, Oh, it's, it's just marijuana. Don't worry about it. I'm like, so we're not, we're, we're just going to let her have whatever. Well, it's just marijuana. Well, we don't know that. 45 minutes later, she was dead. So she was allowed to come into the facility with known contraband uh, smuggling inside of her yes. body cavity. Um, yes. I'm assuming rectal. Uh, no, um, vaginal. Vaginal? Yes. Okay. So she stuffs a bunch of shit up into her, her vagina cavity as this goes through a body scanner. Right. They scan it. They see, okay, she's got stuff in there. Hey, get that shit out. Okay, pulls it out. Walks it through again. Goes, no, stuff's still there. Fuck right. it. Yep. Give it the good old one, two, try. <laughs> and then you can stay and keep that. I am and baffled by this. I mean. Oh, I, I was I was too. Okay. So if you have a superior who's like, hey, don't worry about it, and you're like, but it's at what at what point could you take the reins and be like, nah, dickhead, no, we're going and we're gonna take her straight. We're gonna call an ambulance, we're gonna call what was your rank at the time? Lieutenant. And who was making the call? Uh the captain. Oh. That sounds kind of fucked. And so this person well, goes so in. My mind, and I, I'm sorry, but my mind immediately <laughs> goes to corruption, right? It, I don't understand it, how, unless you're on the take. So, so and every, I'm not, every, I'm not every, accusing every, this man of anything. I don't know this man. I'm just telling you that I, that I don't understand that level of incompetence. I Maybe Chuck can explain it to me because <laughs> it makes my head hurt. It's like a weird, it's like a weird movie where the fall guy is getting really fucked, but can't prove it. You know what I mean? <laughs> right, right, right. So see, I'm going to the, the same thing. Okay, so like cor corruption, like why, so, why would you allow someone to come? Yeah. To facility with, with is that what you're dealing with right now? So every, everything there's about, everything there's about saving money. So every time we send somebody to the hospital, it costs, costs us money, right? Sure. Well, and we, and, and to be fair, we used to do that. We used to take yeah. people into custody. I remember, I remember, Chuck, I think we talked about this, but I remember taking a homeless guy to jail for burglary because he had burglarized beer and it was a solving the problem arrest. And I get him to the jail and he's got a golf ball sized uh, staph infection on his back. And the nurse comes out and says, get him the F out of my jail right now. <laughs> and so I take him to the hospital and I literally, it was a, I want to take this homeless guy off the street I need to arrest him. Oh, he stole a bunch of beer. It, it was the most nothing arrest in the world. Now I'm at the hospital with a guy with a staph infection on his back. And we, the doctor says, oh no, we have to, we can't, we have to cut him open. <laughs> and you know, that's the only right way to cure a staph infection. And so I just, like he said, I unarrested. You are, you are no longer <laughs> under arrest because the yeah, cost yeah. to the city that I worked for, should I, have this guy in custody during medical procedures. I'm going to eat that cost. So I get why counties would not want to take people to the hospital, especially from jail, especially when so much of it is bullshit. So let me, let me at least say, I get it. <laughs> now in this instance, we're at a whole other level where oh, how yeah. the fuck did she get in the jail 
with that stuff to begin with. Right. If they would have, if she didn't, she wasn't arrested by the county. She was arrested by one of our cities. So right. whenever they ran her through the body scanner, if they would have, if they would have rejected her right then, it would have been on the city. It wouldn't even have been on us. Well, like, so that's, that's what I'm saying. Right. right. So the fact that the, the, you guys bought the body, right. The PD mm -hmm. comes in, right. they do the body scan and yeah, you're like, ah, screw it. We'll take her. That's the level where I'd see this. Like, I don't understand. <clears throat> it has to be, that has to be somebody willfully letting. So I'm, and it's not like we haven't seen <laughs> news stories about deputies and right. direction officers getting arrested right. for, and prison guards for being involved in plots to smuggle. I talked to a guy, I, uh, he was an assistant warden. He says, we fire people monthly, mm -hmm. monthly for smuggling. For sure. So it happens, right? But yeah. is that what you think? Do you think that this was deliberate? Oh, no. It's, it's just uh, incompetence. Like, like ne neither one of them have any business in their positions. Neither one of them. Well, how did this not come out in the death investigation? Oh, it oh it did. Okay, like, all right, like, baby, go on, go on. Here we go. So, so our SID comes in to talk to her. So at first she was in a cell with a camera, and then my captain said, "Nope, move her over here. Turn the water off." So you know she can't flush anything, right? So SID comes in to talk to her. They weren't even going to charge this girl with the drugs because she wanted to talk to them. Well, she took something while she was in the holding cell. So SID gets there. We go over, open the door. She's laying on the floor. Dead. So we start immediately start CPR. We do CPR for I don't know, 25 minutes before EMTs get there. They get there. Our doctor shows up. My captain shows up. So as far as she would admit to, she had weed in her uterus. Right. right. Okay. Um, and now she's dead. And nobody right. saw her take anything. Well, we did when we went back on camera. We saw okay. her. We saw Sorry, her I'm getting ahead of myself. Go ahead. Yeah. Um, I mean, I'm in full investigator mode. You know what I mean? Because as soon as somebody's allowed to smuggle stuff into jail, I want to know whose fault it was. <laughs> yeah. Right. Oh, we're on, we're on the same page because yeah. you know it, I'm like, ha, why is she here? You know, so doctor shows up. He goes ahead and pronounces her. The coroner shows up, takes his pictures, bag her up, out the door she goes. So then me and my captain go back and we're looking at we're looking at the video, and they take her from getting the first batch out that she got out for them she goes to our padded cell where there's a camera she's in there she's digging around she pulls something out takes it then at that point that's when my captain's like no move her out of there move her over here where there's no camera so you saw her take something and said the reason why i'm moving her is because she just ingested something oh no 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 we saw this afterwards oh uh, yeah th this was <clears throat> then why can move her to a different cell uh, that's a good question because it's See, this like, all stinky. Yeah. This is now two two like, incidents. Yeah, like like I said, it's it's total doesn't know what he's doing. So in my report, I put I put all this in my report. I put my phone call with him, I put the movement with him, you know, I put all this in my report. Now, at this point, that's where everything starts going downhill. Hmm. Now being accused now. of <laughs> now being accused of stuff that cannot like uh I got accused of pulling an employee's hair because he had a ponytail. What? Well, first of all, he's a jail employee. Right. Like a guard. You shouldn't right. have a ponytail as a jail. Like exactly. a correctional officer with a ponytail? Right. So he was on Where do you work? <laughs> no, no, don't say. It. Don't say. It. So guess. he, so he was on our other night shift, and I needed help that night. So we called some people. People showed up. So he walks in, and where I see this ponytail is on camera. 
Like it's in our booking area. And I look at him and I go, Oh, nice ponytail. That's in the uh, policy, right? In the conversation. I'm three feet away from this guy. And he goes on, well, the captain's seen it, blah, 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 blah. So I send an email to my captain. I'm like, so we can have ponytails now? <laughs> and I get in trouble because I didn't say something to the, or he, the, the officer claims that I pulled his ponytail. This is, you know, this is what he wrote in a statement. Now there were two females from the other shift that did not have their hair up. They were supposed to have it, you know, tucked up, you know, so mm -hmm. it can't be pulled or whatever. Well, I told them the same thing. I said, y'all need to put y'all's hair up, which they did. Well, on camera, whenever I tell him about his ponytail, you know, their hair's down. So I get brought to the office and I get told, well, first, you know, you pulled, you pulled his ponytail. I'm like, no, no, I never, never touched his ponytail. And you didn't tell the two female, you didn't say anything to them. And I said, yes, I did. And if you go back and look 15 minutes later, their hair's up. So I get a bad eval saying that I had a bad attitude because I wouldn't own up to my mistakes. And how, how soon after you filed your report on the in custody death is this? Um, probably a month and a half. When, <clears throat> when, the, when the, they found out the family was talking about lawsuits. Now, so, well, so let's go back. So what did she die of? Um, uh, it was overdose fentanyl no, no, of what fentanyl. Obviously, yeah. yeah. Okay. So she's allowed to take fentanyl in the jail and she overdoses and dies. Right. right. And this was the pill that, you, that she was seen taking on camera. Right. They confirmed that at her autopsy. Right. So now whoever let her take the pill is on the hook for this. Right. Which, you know, everything, everything starts at the top and, you know, and comes down. Well, forget <laughs> letting her smuggle the, the, the dope in. Right. Like, who, who was the one in that cell that let her take the pill, right? Who 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 is who's on the hook for that? Uh it, I mean it'd basically just be the sheriff's department. You know, they're gonna they're gonna sue everybody. Everybody, you know, all everybody that was there, they're gonna sue everybody. Yeah, my th my thought is at some point, you know, for for example, Chuck, I did uh is your agency Say if you're outside of policy, we don't have to indemnify you, and they wash yes. their hands of you. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They can. They can be like, we're not protecting you. Um, yeah. And uh, it, well, if you go at well, here's the caveat to it. If you can articulate the reasons why you went undeviated from policy, um, and you can be okay. Cause well, that's can, if they want to indemnify you. Yeah. What I'm saying right. is, yeah, is if they don't want to, no, you're, you're going to be screwed. Well, and they can probably even fire you too. It's let you go, so they don't have to eat the charge or not right. the charge, but the the money to protect you. To because uh, a lot of collective bargaining units have you know lawyers that you you can use um, for free because mm -hmm. you pay for it, right? But if right. if you're let go, Corac and yeah, internal order police and all, any of those legal defense funds that you that you put into as a group, right? To right. Well, whoever you do, yeah, 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 yeah. right, whoever. huh? Hmm. So. According to our it's policies, nice. we were in policy by putting her in, in that cell and turning the water off because that's what our policy states. Right. Morally, morally, she should have been sent to the hospital to get the drugs out of her. Well, here's the thing. Does, does your policy, I would think your policy, like most correctional facilities, it says under bringing drugs into the facility it says don't right so here's what i don't get is only charge how how we're not going all the way back to the fact that she got in there with weed right right that mm -hmm. that we that, that she said was just weed right At autopsy was it just weed uh no so what what did they pull out of her after yeah, she was dead she, she had more fentanyl in in up there too okay so now you've got uh, this is where it breaks down for me because i don't know how 
unless it's some corrupt little town <laughs> where Boss Hogg is trying to run the Duke boys out of Georgia, how do people get away with this level of incompetence and not have it be corruption? I, you know what I mean? I don't understand. Yeah. It's like what it's like knowing not no not I'm sorry not knowing but smuggling in a weapon that you can't see because you your 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 agency doesn't have a body scan and it has like right. a, a metal detector and you're it goes through but you're like there's nothing fucking there and next thing you know they pull out a fucking gun because they pulled it up they had it so far up their ass that they were able to pull it out you know you, you'd be okay on that because you couldn't see it but the right. moment you can see inside of someone's body and you're like okay there's drugs in there let's get that out. Hey, you know, you have drugs and you're not supposed to come in with drugs. It's a felony. Get it the fuck out. And it comes back. In. I will okay. say even back in my day, the DA, uh, wouldn't charge that sometimes we, yeah, there was we, one paper where they said you made them bring the drugs into the facility. I said, what do you mean? He said, well, you arrested him for a warrant. And I said, I, yeah, but he had drugs on. And I asked him, do you have any drugs? Cause that's a whole separate charge. And they're like, well, yeah, but he just didn't want to get charged with the drugs. I'm like, of course he didn't want to get charged with the drugs, but he brought them into the jail. Well, that's because you forced him to bring him into the jail. What are you he forced about? himself by not paying his this ticket? This was the DA's <laughs> argument, dude. This was the DA's <laughs> argument on why they wouldn't charge this parolee with having methamphetamine up his ass. Anyway, so, this is ow. the level of like politics that I don't. Right. I don't understand. Go ahead. So, like I said, we were we were covered in our policy on this. As far for turning as, off the water, right? But not for, for letting her in with the fentanyl. Oh no no no! That well, see, we did, <coughs> we did, like I like like I told my captain. She said it was marijuana. I said we have no idea what what's up there. When I was trying to get Does her your policy, to allow them to come in with marijuana. Well, it. It allows them to come in, be put in a cell until she gets a clear body scan or until they get a clear body scan. Wait, the policy is different. your policy says yep. if, if you detect drugs in their body, yep, you can put them in a holding cell with the drugs in their body yep, and leave them there. Yep. But if you, but you have to turn off the water so they can't flush it. That's correct. <laughs> who gives a shit what kind of drugs it is and what they can take in once they're in the cell. Correct. It actually says that. Yep. Well, not, it doesn't say they can take the drugs, but the part of putting them in there. No, the I mean, off, it's implied yeah. at, at yeah, that point. Right. It's implied. I'd, I, you know, Hey, you know, if you get in the cell with your drugs, you know, it disappears, just turn off the water. So you can't flush it. <laughs> yeah. Like me, dude. Uh, oh, what, what else can I do with it? I don't know. <laughs> That's up to you. <laughs> How does a place that has a very weird policy, right, have a body scan? Uh, because I I talked him into uh getting what? one and showed him where to get the grant. Like we didn't mm -hmm. have to pay for them. We got two of them. Yeah, yeah you can um, write a grant and proposal yeah. and get it, you know, yeah. given to you by the the so, state or whatever. So here you are, a lieutenant, writing grants to get body scanners. And you file this report, and then a month and a half later, some deputy with a with a freaking top oh, knot. No, 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 it was it was in the back, like it was it no, was hanging down behind I'm his just, collar. I'm being yeah. like, some samurai wannabe. Yeah, <laughs> accuses you of pulling his hair, right? And so you are now sitting in HR. No, no, no. Just, just the captain, captain and colonel's office. Because now, you know, we had a director before, but when she came in, she was a major where she was at. She didn't want to go to director, so they created her a colonel position. Well, you're so this. So um, this is this is very much an East Coast thing that I you're. I, we need to unpack a colonel for you. We we never had one before. I, no, no, no. I, I, I understand. <laughs> I'm just saying. I'm trying to wrap my, because when we get to a certain point, we get above, like, we have uh, <laughs> lieutenant, mm -hmm. uh, commander, right. captains, we, we have assistant chiefs, we have deputy chiefs, we have chiefs, mm -hmm. we don't have majors and colonels, so I want to wrap my head around. The colonel of the jail is 
the HMFIC, he's like the chief of police of the jail. She is. Right. That is correct. Well, it's whoever. A, yeah. I, I'm not saying in reality right. who this actual gendered person <laughs> was. I just meant in general, the rank, regardless of the person in the rank, that's the colonel is in charge of everything. Right. So in theory, you would have like a, a colonel in charge of patrol and a colonel in charge of investigations, and then the sheriff would be above all of them? Well, she she's the only colonel we have. On the on the deputy side, you have the sheriff, deputy chief. Sorry, I just then, we have to unpack this because a lot of yeah. people won't understand the colonel. Um, yeah, no, nobody does. Nobody, nobody understands why she was made a colonel. Um, no, I meant they won't understand position? what a colonel is. Uh, new mm -hmm. title, not yeah. not new position. New title. Right. Um, so, what is generally that position under? Director. Director of facilities. Like Yes, but what, what rank is the director of facilities? Yeah. No rank. Is it civilian? Confused. Uh, I mean, they're they're jail certified. I mean, they're not. No, but I mean, you get hired as a prior. Are you are you sworn law enforcement right officers right? Sworn. Not in, not in the jail. Then what are in the jail? So you work for the county sheriff. And your civilian employees, right, with no authorities to arrest, no authorities to. You're not correctional officers by statute, and therefore subject to assault on a peace officer while on duty, kind of a oh, thing. Well, we're we're de we're deputies. We're just not sworn sworn officers. It, it's okay. it's a little it's a little confusing. <laughs> So, so you're basically there. I get it. And I think I understand you. It's probably a situation like we had at our jail where the correctional officers and the deputies deputy meant you could go out in the field. Correctional officer meant you could only work in the jail. Right. And the correctional officers were sworn well on duty. And like, for example, if they were driving somebody to court, they could carry a gun. But other than that, they could not. Well, we no, we <laughs> we could not carry guns at all. No, but we would do transports. With felons, okay. no gun, it, no gun, just taser. So awesome. I'll, I always said, if oh. anybody ever pulled up and said, "Hey, I want him," hey, here he is, here's keys. <laughs> you know, welcome here, dude. So yeah. in our city, we had the Atascadero State Hospital, mm -hmm. and if you've ever seen Terminator Two, that's the hospital they make fun of, where you know, criminally insane people go and they lock Sarah Connor up and they right. call it it's something else. And that actual hospital was in the city where I worked, right? Um, they had a quote unquote police department. Well, their police department were actually the guards for the hospital, <laughs> but because it was not a correctional facility, because it was a hospital, they could not have the classification of guard. So they had to reclassify them as police officers. <laughs> even though they could not leave the grounds of the hospital, right? Or carry guns. Well, these people would make traffic stops in the parking lot of their own hospital <laughs> without guns, right? This is, the, and this department was three times the size of our police department because of the size of this hospital. If Hannibal Lecter were a real person, they would have put him in this hospital. This is where Ed Kemper, the serial killer was put right. before when they when he killed his grandparents at 15 and they were like well we should probably lock him up and then at 21 they're like oh he's cured and then he went on a serial killing rampage right <laughs> so i get what you're saying these guys we would take them really terrible people and the cops would be you know shotguns and shackles and as soon as they got in the hospital they were considered a patient and they were completely unlocked from anything and let to roam freely about the grounds mm -hmm. so i I cannot imagine if you're working the actual county jail and you're you're not armed and you're having to transport felons, but I imagine it's something like what these damn state hospital guys had to do where they're talking to Hannibal Lecter with nothing but a rape whistle. Right. <laughs> yeah, <clears throat> that sounds very, very odd and unsafe. Um, oh, 100%. So 
they it seems like like okay they're trying to build a pattern as soon as shit starts going south they start trying to build a pattern and do you get in another incident or do they just bring down the the the, the paperwork and goes you know what and it, you know it makes sense oh. because he's not sworn he has less protection so they go hey you allowed someone to die on your shift you're gone or was there more that led up to that oh no i got i got i got um accommodation for the work we did to try to you know give her medical medical attention like oh I was, okay i was yeah for this i was told you know by the sheriff and they you know not really the colonel i only saw her three times but i was told you know great job you know y'all did what y'all could blah 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 mm -hmm. blah and then a month and a half later that's when i get accused of pulling hair you know not not treating the females the same by telling them to put their hair up but again no absolutely zero zero proof just him writing the statement so then i get called in now oh when i when i got called into used of assaulting this employee by pulling his hair <clears throat> now i i assaulted him correct according to the statement and right. what i was told i assaulted him was i right reprimanded was i written up was anything put on paper not mm -hmm. a thing nope not so a, thing. a complaint was filed right but there was no action taken on the complaint was it unfounded oh no according to them it was on camera and they showed it to you no they did not but they never they were like oh we saw you do it and you're like prove it and they said well we just know we can't but pretty pretty much pretty much like like so well just know that we know we knew we, yeah. we just wanted you to know we knew yeah pretty much so then um uh, i can't now we're gonna we're gonna oh it oh it this it, it gets better so now we're gonna fast forward to may of this year um about roughly around the middle of may we we have our scanners that we use to do our head counts and keep track of everything we have scanners we have to go around and hit tags right so we were having issues with the scanners and i told everybody at our shift briefing i'm like look we know the scan just keep scanning like you're supposed to and they're working on getting them fixed so about 20 minutes in the shift i get a phone call from one of my officers scanners not working blah 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 i said i know the scanners aren't working do your scans like you're supposed to just do your scans keep doing your work so then that was monday i get called on the phone by my captain who says uh do you know anything about these statements that are on my disc I don't know. What are you talking about? What statements? Uh, they said you yelled at them. Like, uh, don't don't recall yelling at anybody. All right, well, we're doing a formal investigation. I believe until further notice with pay. I'm like into what? into people saying you yelled at them. Was it employees that were saying you yelled at them? Yes. And I'm like, um, what? <laughs> so then I, so then I get called back to the, back to the office. I show up and they're like, yep, you are, uh, so we're going to go ahead and, uh, we're going to go ahead and terminate terminate at this time i'm like uh, so did they have to do an investigation did they ever let you know nope. what the case was like because that's nope. that can't happen where i worked right like right like chuck i know we, we may we know we have been we don't have the same circumstances as every other agency or every other state right. there's a lot of states where they don't have peace officers bills of rights and cops can just be fired willing <laughs> Is that yeah, the situation where you're at, where there is no hearing process, there is no 
Yeah, we're 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 in a, we're we're an at will state, so they can they can just let us go just because they want to let us go. So they said you were mean and 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 so you're gone. Yep, you're right. And I said when they when they said they were letting me go, I'm like, uh, based on what the statements, I'm like, what because somebody said that I yelled at them. Mm -hmm. Where's the proof? Okay. And he goes, and, and, and then earlier you assaulted an, another employee and I'm like, but you didn't do anything. You didn't do anything about that. But now somebody says I yelled at him. Hmm. So they I mean, considered assaulting an employee a warning or so here's the, here's my question. <laughs> are you saying, are, are you saying that the two are tied together? I, I honestly, I, I couldn't tell you. I never got a piece of paper. I never, I never got anything. Mm. Like it, it was like they were, they were dumbfounded that you know I questioned because there were statements that I yelled at somebody. Like he had to bring, but in the past you assaulted somebody, and I'm like, yeah, but you didn't do anything about that. <laughs> like I got nothing. For assault, if I assaulted somebody, hell, I should have been putting handcuffs, right? Okay. I mean, but no, I didn't get anything. But I yell, I so called yell at somebody, and they're like, "Oh, you're unmanageable." We got. I'm like, hmm. yeah. So, so now I went. Now I'm working for another sheriff's department in the county that I actually live in. Because our counties are, you know, they're so close together. Um, mm -hmm. My old director that I love to death, they got got canned when the new sheriff came in. He's director down here now, so now I work for him. And it, so that's this, interesting. This, they didn't they didn't totally screw you out of staying in corrections. No, no. And no. you've been able to to go to the jail. So now it's even closer for you where you work what? right so they what? yeah it's, they, it's almost like they just wanted to get rid of you like like yo, yo oh, you 100 percent. but why i think it had to do with that report that i wrote on that death and custody but what does that report have to do with anything it basically said that um this jail doesn't know because i'm you know in my oh, report I said, so in your report you didn't just you didn't just report that this is what you happened. You kind of laid him out. <laughs> oh, yeah. In my report, so, I said, I, now I that called, report, I so are they suing the, are they suing the County? As far as I know, they are. And I can't, and so I can't your wait. report is central to that lawsuit. Oh, yeah. uh -huh. oh okay. Yeah. So they're like, yo, yo, we got to get this motherfucker out of here. <laughs> oh, it, it doesn't matter. There's court. So, so, I mean, my, you know, they can't change my report. Well, did you, so you got this, another, you got this other job. Are you right. uh, planning on suing your old agency or can Damn. you not? Cannot. Well, fuck because that. Yeah. you're a civilian, you can do whatever the fuck you want. What do you mean? You can't, I would sue well, for wrongful termination. I would sue. We, 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 at we, we state. don't. Yeah. At will state. Oh, fuck. So you sign those rights away. Yeah. They can so fire you. Any time for any reason. Day, they didn't, I fire me for, they didn't fire me for, you know, age or anything like that. Yeah. So you have to be just, a protective class or a whistleblower. Right. Yep. Yeah. Idaho's an well, at state. So don't, don't well, Rick, you're at to, state. Yeah. <laughs> Rick, you're going to have to come back and tell us all about, um, like you have to, or send us an email and tell us how the, the lawsuit comes out. That's what I want to know is do they, do they settle with this family? Or I, if they, like, I if mean, they like would. I said, this was this was you know pretty recent, so it'll it'll probably be you know at least a year or more. Yeah, well, send us an email and let us know. Yeah, we'll do. All right, thanks, Rick. <laughs> uh, you're welcome. Appreciate it. All right, bye bye. Bye bye. All right, that was uh, Rick updating on us on some shit that's happened to him since he was last on. Holy shit. I, uh, 
That sounds like some corruption, dude. Like I'm, I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> like, if that, that, it either it's either extreme incompetence, but how, I don't know how you go from fucking. Hey, there's dope. Why don't we just call back the you know the arresting unit? And be like, hey, this motherfucker's got dope. Take it to a contract right? hospital. Get that shit the fuck out, and then bring it back in. Why would you just? I don't, I don't know why they would just let someone sit either. inside of their jail and be like, hey, we'll just see what happens. And then like. So if that really went down the way it went down, because we, you know, there's always two sides to every story, right? Right, right, and sure. So, and we don't see video, so it's kind of like debriefing someone's thing. So we're trying to think, like, okay, well, yeah. what is? Like, you know, I wish we had the know? jail video. I would love to, because here's yeah. here's my issue with it. What he's describing to me is a level of incompetence that is bordering on criminal, let alone negligent. Right? Like, it's clearly negligent. Yeah, that's like, and it's borderline criminal to me, right? <laughs> like, yeah, 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 what the hell? And we're not saying that the, the guy we had on was a part, like, like part of a, a, a criminal organization. So we're we're thinking that the people up top are allowing this shit to go on and turning a blind eye to it, and it's like blatantly, mm-hmm. almost like blatantly obvious. If it was like the B-rated film, you know. Of mm-hmm. like the stupid shit, like oh no no, we're just gonna let them through. But that's that's against policy and that's wrong. No no no, it's okay. Mm-hmm. We're just gonna let them through. Don't look. That's right. almost like what it, it seems like. Um, and maybe because he was like laying people out in reports and fucking being like, hey, that was wrong. This is the reason why this person died. It right. could have been prevented. This was a hundred percent preventable. The captain didn't know right. what the fuck he was doing, and he eventually made the ultimate call. And you're laying everyone out like you should. Because you don't right. want to get in trouble for lying for someone else, especially when it comes to a death. Because when that shit gets brought out, you could be held in, in conspiracy and to commit fucking negligent homicide or fucking whatever the fuck. I don't know. But if, uh, dude, I mean, I've heard some crazy shit from inside of the jails. But, you know, if, if just speaking from my agency, if we, and I'm sure your agency would probably be just the same if they mm-hmm. if we had the money for one of those cool body scans like tsa has you come in like okay there's drugs get the fucking drugs out they're like Mm-mm. and you're like okay well i'm gonna fucking charge you with a felony and then we're gonna get a warrant we're gonna go up there and we're gonna physically fucking remove them or you call back the the, the unit and you go get this person the fuck out of here they're concealing drugs you're not taking it out tell the uh, hospital they're concealing drugs it's a fucking you know, if right. pop or whatever is in there pops, they could die. And you either get an RA right out of the jail or you put them in the back of your shop, probably get an RA so you don't have an in custody death in the back of your vehicle. And then you go to the nearest contract hospital, let them know what the fuck's going on and they can go in and, and um, get it out because it's and then save it as evidence. For bringing yeah, I, controlled substance into a fucking jail facility. Because that, that story, like, okay, that story about the guy who didn't get charged, there's a little more to it, and I didn't want to get too into it. But there's going to be, like, more to every side. No well, and here's the thing. The, when a parole agent knows you have dope up your ass, and he arrests you on a parole warrant, and he knows, like, you, you can see the cellophane like there's a little piece of cellophane sticking out of his crack like a tail. Right. Yeah. And you know, he's got something keistered because they did, they, you know, they made him do a strip search and they see the little tail sticking out of him. And so at the time, this guy, you know, says, get it out or you're taking a new charge. And he says, I, I don't, I don't can't get it out. And he hands him his pen. He goes, dig it out. I don't care, but you get it out or you're taking a new charge. I walked away. I'm like, I, I don't need to see that. I don't need to be part of it. <laughs> I'm good. I just drove here. Like I was the, I was the, <laughs> the big I was the guy, I was the guy dispatched to go help parole so they could transport this guy because he didn't have a cage in his car. Right. Like I, I'm, I'm just here That's for the popcorn. <laughs> here we are. This game oh, and, I'm getting the and it out. had already gotten bad like we were already in a, he had already done a some questionable search tactics in the parking lot of a poker club like we he this is funny he so i get dispatched to help parole out and we go over to uh we had one of those card rooms card clubs you know so gambling in california is not legal 
but you can have private card rooms, right? And that's mm-hmm. where you can host a location where, you know, technically like it's like having a private poker game. You can have poker games where the deal revolves, right? Where you don't have a house. Any game where you don't have a house. So what you end up having is people open card rooms where it's legal to go there and play poker for a fee or whatever. Um, and that's how they make their money and they sell <laughs> drinks. Sometimes they sell drinks, but anyway. Um, so we had one and it was attached to a bar and this parole agent says, Hey, you know, I need, I need backup. Cause I got no cage in my car. So I show up and he says, he says to me that there's a, he knows there's a parolee that he's, he wants him for a parole warrant because he's heard that he's been, he, he's been ducking his, you know, appointments and he heard he's been using dope and slinging dope. So now he wants him. So like a movie, he storms into this card room and I'm walking behind him like, well, did, did we really just, are we really just going to try and take this guy down in the middle of this poker card room? Like all of a sudden I hear old timey piano music and I'm envisioning like an old Western bar brawl and I'm here for it. Honestly. Right. There's a part of me that's like, let's do it. But um, the guy gets up from the, he's like, get up. He's like, all right, man. All right. He snatches him up from the table, takes him outside, searches him in the parking lot with a flashlight between his teeth and rubber gloves on his hands and trying to like see down the guy's pain. It, I'm like, dude, let's just take him to the jail. What the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> I know, right? Like he's like he's like trying to pull hold him against the wall and pull the the and see down to see if he's smuggling anything in the back of his pants because that's where he's got you know information the dope is at. And he's got his flashlight in his mouth, and I'm like, <laughs> I should believe that. And I was like, I said, uh, let's let's just take him to jail and let them do it. And he's like, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Because uh, this guy had more balls and brains sometimes. So we take him to the jail. And uh, he, sure enough, he does have dope. And exactly where, that's in, shit, I said his name again. Uh, exactly <laughs> where this guy's informant said it was. Right. But we didn't, we can't, there's no... <laughs> There's no world in which a parole agent's going to go, I see the dope and pull the tail of dope sticking out of his butthole. Right? Like, no. so that's where he's telling the guy, get it out. Like, you, if you take that in there with you, they're going to have to do special things, you know, make you turn off the water, like that guy says, make you poop it out, blah, 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 blah. And it's going to be a whole other charge. And so the guy finds his way to get it out and comes back like um <laughs> you keep fucking this the third time i know i he comes because i'm so i'm i haven't told the story in years and it's like talking you're like talking to a buddy so i forget sometimes <laughs> or, yeah anyway. so um he he comes back and he got this it, got this huge grin on his face like a labrador coming back with a duck at a duck blind and i'm like cool awesome bro (laughs) i'm like (laughs) i'm like cool awesome charge him with it right like possession sure you caught a case dude high five with but take your gloves off first right that was the caper they wouldn't charge the dude and they said, really? with all of those opportunities, this guy had every opportunity in the world to give up the dope. Right. And it was well documented in my my buddy's report. See, I didn't say his name that time. Well right. documented in my buddy's report uh, that he gave him all those opportunities. And I was there. And the DA refused to file. And this was my first taste of, well, not my first taste, but it was early on in my career. And I was like, this is what a a DA who is political and, and I won't say how or why this was political because there's a lot of different reasons. But if you think about it, it could be because their politics are informing their policies, right? 
Right. Uh, Gascon's a perfect example. Some of these DAs they br- they brought up. Um, that what was that? The mother she spoke yeah. about uh, her son being murdered by uh, an illegal immigrant who had been a felon previously released from jail, right. and she was explaining that it was the DA of New York. And then so she pointed out to the DA of New York, Chicago, San Francisco, and L.A., and specifically George Gascon, those four activist DAs. Well, that could be a situation where the DA is an activist and they're doing things. Right. There's also situations where DAs, man, they keep their jobs based on winning an election, right? They got to be popular. So yeah. they, they get elected on their win and loss record. And if they don't prosecute cases that they don't think they can win, but that's yeah. where I go, how do you not think you can win that? They don't want the trouble. They want they want easy, you no know, questions asked stuff and drugs because they knew the way California is going with drugs, especially you know when it, 2015, mm-hmm. 2015, I think that's when Prop forty seven was released. Oh, right, and that right. when it changed all felonies to misdemeanors with drug possessions, even for mm-hmm. dangerous controlled substance meth. Mm-hmm. Um they changed that and it was a misdemeanor. You're like the fuck it says dangerous and controlled substance. And this is a fucking like what $500 bail. Right. Dollar bail or some shit. And it, I think it was heroin is 500 and like uh meth was hundred bucks. I think to get out of jail and you're like, what the f-? like, dude, it was just wild. And uh, <clears throat> so maybe that's the whole reason. Cause they knew that's the way it was going. you know, it, it I, I we use we had that shit going on all the time the city attorney would fail to prosecute right like open and shut cases and you, you see a guy he's fiddling with a car door and you're like okay he's looking in the car he's fucking taking some sort of shiny object and, and he's fiddling with the door and you you know you go jam him up he throws an object in the air you hook him up you go look where the object was thrown it's a fucking screwdriver um right you go look at the door and the door's punched and you're like okay you're trying to break into this car your attempt for murder, attempt uh, motor burglary suspect or vehicle from motor burglaries, um, uh, and possible, um, you know, um, you know, trying to trying to get into stole vehicle, you know, trying to steal that shit. So you're trying attempting to steal a vehicle and you know, right. a bunch of other stuff. Yeah, and attempt, the attorney's like, nah, dude, I'm not going to fucking charge because yeah. you didn't see him physically put the screwdriver inside of the car door. I'm like, I was fucking 100 feet away in a fucking cop car. I saw him at the door dealing with it, something shiny. But yeah, you're right. From the angle, I can't see him enter into the orifice, right? And that's what they want. They wanted penetration. They wanted me to physically see penetration. I'm like, even if you're like standing 10 feet away, 15 feet away, and you're walking up, Chances are you're not going to see the penetration. You're going to see the same thing. You're going to see a shiny object inside of, or in a door or looks like it's in a door, but you're never going to see it like physically in there unless you get right up on him. You're his buddy. Like it's just, it's not going to happen. And they didn't want to prosecute those cases. And you're just like, the fuck is with this place? It's, it's, I think it's just, they don't want that on their record for maybe like reelection. They're always looking down the pipe. You know, what can they right. what can they do? You know, maybe that's it. But when you go and back to this. Let's see, that's where I wonder about this case. Yeah. This you know, he, he sent us, he wanted to update us and, and ah, man, that sucks. I mean, I'm glad he's still able to work. Like, cause there are some departments where they get rid of you and they totally screw you over and you can't get another gig somewhere else. And then, and you know, I don't know, maybe he did pull the dude's hair and maybe he did scream and yell at people but i mean what are you doing with a ponytail against policy so me yeah. man. <laughs> sorry maybe he was just like hey nice ponytail and jiggled it maybe that's what it was but if you oh, can't provide a video you know, you know what i totally I, hey, nice ponytail. You you just nailed it because I I would have done that. I'd have been like, oh, pony nice ponytail, blue, blue, blue. and he like <laughs> jingle it like boop boop. Right? You, I think you nailed yeah, it. Dude. Yeah. I think you nailed Maybe, it, dude. Maybe. Right? But here's the thing: it's not assault. I mean, not, well, it could be. I'm not touching, but uh, here's the thing: you're just fucking. They can joking. say they can say he pulled the ponytail if he grabs it. They yeah. can say that. Right? Well, like yeah, that's what happened. Damn, that's chicken shit, but Detective Chuck. So yeah, just, hey, anyway. I'm a trained investigator. Yeah, this right. Is, but here's the this is a good takeaway. This is why 
Um, you know, don't work for a place that's at will. And if you are working for a place that's at will and it's got like some fucked up shit, don't listen to the, don't get to the point where you're allowing something to, um, get so far out of whack before you do something you if you're if you're fucking in charge or you're a supervisor yeah. you can always take charge and be like that's wrong we're getting medical attention don't wait i mean because if you're going to lay the person out anyways you're going to ruffle feathers anyways at least there won't be a death involved and if there is you try to prevent it which will be hit a lot easier yeah. um so even if people come on and we're in and we have questions and we think we can learn from it we're going to debrief it a little bit so don't get your panties in a bunch it is what it yeah. is so things people can learn from, we're going to mention them. And I think yeah. we can learn from this. And so I wanted to uh, also add an email because I've been getting this question a lot. Yeah. Um, so, well, we got a couple of things to address some housekeeping uh, on, sure. on the technical side. I am going to, or we, and I'm an idiot, so I'm going to have to have help doing it. Our website, since we're rebranding with War Stories and Locked <laughs> You've, you guys have heard Matt and Ch and and Marcos on on our uh, war stories episodes more and more, and you there you know you guys love them over on Locker Room. Uh, <clears throat> we're going to be kind of merging as these formats have changed and and the 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 things we do on the podcast have grown uh, just over the years. Uh, we're going to you know we're still going to do the great interviews that uh, you guys love and get the stories, and we're still going to do the debriefs. Um, some of them live, some of them not. Uh, but you know, like we said, we've been we've been including uh, Matt and Marco and some of those more. And as yeah. as e locker rooms becoming more and more popular for people to join us, uh, you know, thanks to all the people that are able to make it during the uh, live shows during the week. It's fun to interact with you. Um, we are going to start merging our websites, and I want everybody to go. Uh, if you're a fan of Locker Room, and it, it, so we're in a weird quandary, um, and our following on Facebook for one of the pages is larger than the other, and our following for Instagram on the other page is larger than the other, right? So they kind of are flip flopped. I'm looking at trying to figure out how to merge them. Unfortunately, it looks like that's a giant pain in the ass to do. So we may be asking people. If you follow one, please go follow the other. In fact, if you can follow us on both platforms, once we get to an even number, <laughs> we can uh, we can actually uh, shut down one of them or use it as a backup um, because running two social medias on every platform for both shows is a giant pain in the ass. And when I would we just launched, we launched Locker and we weren't sure if it was going to be its right, own show. Yeah. Uh, it was it was kind of its own thing uh, because it was based on our previous podcast, the older episodes. Uh, so, um, I, I let's let's say that as we merge, we'll be giving you more direction on how that's that's happening. Uh, but we're looking forward to it. To that end, we got to redesign our website. Um, our, I I I haven't touched the design of our website since probably Chuck joined the show. Um, all the merch on there is 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 still available. Um, I think we don't have any decals left, right? We have patches. Yeah. What do we have? Uh, we have stickers, shirts. Uh, stickers, we have, well, yeah, like a small amount of shirts. Uh, some stickers and patches. Did we ever? Did we? Did we sell out of all the Wobby hoodies? Mm -hmm. no, we we sell a few sizes left. Yeah, yeah. A few sizes left. Uh, but we're gonna reorder we're going to start looking at new stuff to put on there. So we want to probably put all that stuff in a clearance section on our website yep. when we redesign it. Um, so if you're reaching out to us through the website, sometimes, yes, we do check it. Yes, we are on there occasionally, but we have not redesigned it. So it just looks outdated and, and the forums and stuff like nobody really wanted to do it. Nobody participated. So we let it, we let it sit there to see if people actually wanted to do it. Um, anyway, just want to let you guys all know that. Um, additionally, I got this email and it's a message. I, I'm going to read this one because it's a message I have answered a bunch of times, like via direct message or email. But I'm going to say this on the show uh, mm -hmm. more and more often. And uh, eventually we might change this. But as of right now, all of our back catalog is pretty much available through our website. Um, I 
I'm not sure how far back our back catalog goes on our host, which is, but our host website, as well as www.warstoriesofficial.com. Uh, those two places are where you can find our entire back catalog. But here's the, here's the message. Hey, do y'all know how I can listen to the very first couple of episodes of War Stories podcast? Specifically, there's an episode where a guy talks about a shootout at McDonald's. <gasps> I remember that. I, that was way back. That was in John's era. And everyone is just uh, staring, and I think a fight with a homeless man. Well, Matt's had several fights with homeless men. Uh, we've had lots of fights with homeless men on the show. Uh, these episodes used to be on Spotify, but aren't anymore. Same with some really, really original locker room episodes. So, is, Spotify only allows you a certain amount of episodes in your back catalog before they start dropping off. And we put out two episodes a week. Uh, so that's eight episodes a month, roughly. So between locker room and war stories, the episodes will drop off faster as they get older. Mm -hmm. What I have thought about doing Chuck and, and maybe people want to message us messages on uh, social media because it's easy. Maybe we'll put up a poll, go to our, go to our, uh, war stories, official, um, on Instagram, Chuck will put up like a, you can put up one of those like, you know, yes or no kind of a stories and then people can answer it. Oh yeah. Um, but uh, we will be, if you want us to re-releasing older episodes uh, from the archives so that you'll get like a third episode a week. So in some cases it'll make some of the more, more, recent older episodes drop off faster but at least it'll give uh you guys a flavor of what you know is still available uh and it'll refresh the spotify feed if we want to do that the you know that's that's up to you guys or the other way is that if people want to just tell us this is my you know hey can you re-release the wood chipper episode can you re-release the lobster claw episode um if you don't know an episode number uh, there's a chance I'll remember what you're talking about, but like you're talking about a homeless man fight. I don't right. know what else that is. Shoot out at McDonald's. I can probably go figure out. Um, but anyway, we've been doing this for, for several years now and we are approaching 300 episodes, Chuck. 300 episodes. It's a lot. Yeah. So I, I'm still having fun. Um, I think as we transition out of just, the traditional interviews it's given us um it's given us a lot of different possibilities and options but look for more changes yeah. as we move forward <clears throat> that's true all right yeah. well do you have anything else yeah i do i'm gonna i'm gonna uh, go over this real quick um since it's, today's not just a, it's not a debrief it was you know a war story um we're gonna do a uh a dedication yeah we have the dedication and, uh, <clears throat> this goes to uh senior corporal segus Joliet uh from louisiana um <clears throat> senior corporal segus Joliet was shot and killed during a hostage barricade at the 2500 block of martin luther king boulevard in janaret an officer with the Janaret Marshal's office attempted to serve a warrant on a convicted felon, but the subject barricaded himself and two people inside the trailer. When Corporal Joliet and other officers uh, entered the home, they were met with gunfire. Corporal Joliet died from his wounds. Three other officers were injured with non-life-threatening injuries. The subject was taken into custody. Corporal Joliet had served with the Lafayette Police Department for 11 years and previously served with the Opelousas uh, Police Department. He was a member of the SWAT negotiator team and supported the Explorer program. He is survived by his wife and five children. He was 35 years of old, years old, 15 year tour. Uh, and death was gunfire. Oh. Well, as always, rest easy, brother. We've got it from here. Yeah, that was that's rough. Wait, I don't. Hey, like, yeah, those those suck. You know, like dude had five fucking kids, serving a fucking warrant, and gets fucking smoked. Like that's horrible. But you know, fuck me. Um, and rough. but you know, if your if your buddy goes down in front of you, um, you know, get him out. Go save him. Right. That's the thing. We're all supposed to be. We're all supposed to be watching each other's backs. Just, 
just be there for each other when you know, when the shit hits the fan. I just want to reiterate that. Oh, uh, man. All right. Well, I mean, as always, you guys can, if you want to be a guest, it's booking.warstories at gmail.com. Yeah. Uh, we've got some people coming up that uh, we've uh, kind of been working out scheduling with between our schedules and everything. Uh, yeah. And, uh, we're looking forward to that. Mm hmm. It's going to be good. So you can follow us on uh, War Stories. You go to our, our website at war, www.warstoriesofficial.com. You can grab some gear. We have some merch, like we said. Again, booking.warstories at gmail.com. I can get you booked. We're always looking for veterans, law enforcement, firefighters, medics, corrections, dispatchers, and nurses. Um, and like we said prior in the podcast, if you already follow us on our Instagram and our War Stories Instagram, um, <clears throat> on our Instagram and Facebook, please share and or unlike our post and also go to the locker room uh, on uh, uh, Instagram and Facebook, follow both of them. Cause we are going to be merging, um, yep. merging those. So again, that will be the locker room Facebook that you should need to go and follow. If you follow war stories or vice versa. And then um, the war stories, Instagram, because those are the two that have the most uh, bodies attached to them. So Go and follow those two because they will end up being the ones that are merged for all of the uh, content. Uh, and then we'll use the other two as backup. So make sure you follow that so you don't miss anything uh, right. you don't miss live or anything like that. And then uh, you can always check us out on YouTube um, and any ever major podcast play, streaming platform. And uh, yeah, that's it. Thank you for the support. Stay safe. And until our next episode, come home with your shield or on it.